Straight ahead, a CCX News special, celebrating the holiday spirit of our local cities. Now that we're in a place that we can give back, it's super important to give back while you can. From a Maple Grove family's moving message to firefighters thinking of those who sometimes can be forgotten during the holidays. We'll also take you behind the scenes of a super volunteer effort. We call ourselves the Skull Sisters. That became a year-round thing. And where holiday lights continue to shine bright. The lights represent more than just a season, but it, they represent people. Thanks to a neighbor who stepped in. CCX News Holiday Spirit starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us on this special edition of CCX News Holiday Spirit. It is the season of giving and a prime example of that can be seen at Interfaith Outreach and Community Partners. The local nonprofit is in the midst of its biggest fundraising push of the year. During its annual sleep out campaign, Interfaith Outreach encourages people to sleep outside and raise awareness and money to fight homelessness. The challenge that we're seeing is that 429 individuals showed up at our doorstep last year experiencing homelessness at some point throughout the year. And that's almost one in five of the families that we serve. And that is an unprecedented number. We've never seen anything to that level before ever. And so we're seeing a rise in poverty. We're seeing a rise in um, need and in individuals needing a place to live. In this year's awareness campaign, Interfaith Outreach has started promoting the sleep out to more resemble suburban homelessness, where people resort to a friend's couch or floor to sleep for the night. One Maple Grove family has come up with a unique way to share that message. It's about like what like our plan of action. Madison and Melissa Swoverland are making a list and checking it twice. Like what's our goal, like how many bags we want to pack. But this planning and preparation isn't for the holidays, but instead for a bedless night. Even though somebody's not standing outside on the corner as a homeless, they could still have like a place not to call home and they're sleeping on somebody's couch. Last year, the family hosted six girls for a bedless night so they could learn more about suburban homelessness. And we use the downtime at bedless night as well to go over stories, which we have right here. And it's like a kit that IOCP has provided for us on how to make this experience so phenomenal and memorable and, and impactful for everybody involved. They also made bags to hand out. Each girl the next morning after the bedless night, they are sent home with care packages to keep in the back of their car and then they hand them out whenever they see a homeless person. Supporting suburban homelessness is important to Madison and Melissa because they were homeless for a short time a few years ago. Because we've been there and we're very grateful for our life now. However, we understand that now that we're in a place that we can give back, that it's super important to give back while you can. We are so blessed to have these two so involved in our work. This mother-daughter volunteer duo kick-started the Bedless Night Initiative last year so younger people could better understand what it's like to be homeless in the suburbs. This year, they hope to involve more than 15 girls and make 150 bags. They literally are creating excitement and enthusiasm and just joy for the work that we do in the community. She got those nice drawstrings. Interfaith bags. Outreach hopes to raise $2.4 million with this year's Sleep Out campaign. According to the organization, the Sleep Out fundraiser has prevented homelessness for 32,000 men, women, and children throughout its history. The holidays arrived early for some seniors in New Hope. It's pretty cool. It's a good feeling, helping others. The West Metro Fire Department and Home Instead Senior Care teamed up to make the season bright for seniors. On Thursday, they loaded up several trucks full of gifts and other goodies. As part of the Be a Santa to a Senior program, generous community members and firefighters purchased presents. Residents at Good Samaritan in New Hope were happy to see the unexpected gifts. I'm very happy. I'm very happy for this. I feel like a little kid that's never gotten anything. Really. I've always been in the Christmas spirit. Yes. And I always will be. The Via Santa to a senior volunteer has handed out more than 60 presents at that location alone.
Plymouth Middle School's holiday shop is rewarding students for kindness. The school student leaders got together and set up a gift shop where students can buy presents for themselves or other people. But they won't be spending any money. Instead, they'll use paws. That's what they call a kindness currency. When a student does something kind, they get paws. And if you earn enough of them, you can buy some pretty nice stuff. Student leaders say setting up the store has made the holiday season special. Well, it's just kind of fun to come in here and be able to not go to class and then come in here and um, just like organize. And then with my friends who came in here to help as well, that was really fun. The holiday store opened up for business on Friday and merchandise was donated by parents and teachers. The holiday spirit also includes someone who has been very generous to the community throughout the year. Arthur Bia and his wife are from rural Liberia and they have a heart for improving health care there. They formed the Liberian Health Initiative. We are focusing on Liberia and it looks like there's need in the community here. But Bia told us they also shifted focus to help educate Liberians here in Minnesota, too. They host health fairs and partner with medical groups to try to educate people in a culturally appropriate way how to live with diseases like hypertension and diabetes. If you have to explain to you, it's not in a culturally appropriate way. When you're talking about food, it's not the kind of food you eat. When you're talking about carbs, what is carbs? So people do not know. So we try to take that and translate it in, a, in the, the, the cultural way. It is all a volunteer effort for BIA. The next educational event is scheduled for February in Brooklyn Park. Still ahead, some super volunteers who became super friends. And up next, a toy drive that turned into one big Brooklyn Park tradition. CCX News Holiday Spirit is back in just a moment. Welcome back. A Minnesota Twins fan in Crystal used his love for the team to start a coat drive that's grown beyond what he imagined. It kind of started with um, Justin Morneau's coat drive, and I'm a, he's my favorite player, and um, this is his ninth year he's had it. That's Todd Vreeland, who works at Standard Water Control Systems in Crystal. He and the company led the charge to collect around 3,000 coats that are donated through the Justin Morneau Foundation to the Salvation Army. The coats come in from different drop-off spots all around the area. Uh, I believe Robbinsdale PD came up with somewhere around 70 coats that were donated by community members, uh, employees of the police department. So we had several pe different people that were donating. People kind of just come in on a whim and, and drop off whatever, whatever, they, whatever they have. Now here are some pictures from when the Salvation Army came to collect all of the coats. They needed big vans to transport all of them. The Robbinsdale Crime Prevention Association also donated money to help with coat collection costs. Holiday parties are synonymous with the month of December, but there's an annual get together in Brooklyn Park that's centered around the spirit of giving, though none of the invited guests actually receive a gift. As Delane Cleveland reports, this annual tradition draws hundreds of people. Hello. Every year on the second Saturday of December, good, good to see you. Merry uh, Christmas. Jerry Moskowitz welcomes dozens of people into his Brooklyn Park home. We've got people that are driving up to two hours to be here today. It's a tradition that dates back to the mid 1980s. See, we've got everything from people that I've known, people I work with, neighbors, our kids. During a nine hour time span, about 160 people will make their way through Jerry's front door. Because it's just a thing that we've always done. I have friends from high school that still come every year. And it's just a great tradition. Hi, how you doing? But this isn't your typical Christmas gathering. <laughs> They're here specifically to contribute to Jerry's 33rd annual Toys for Tots drive. It, it's a nice atmosphere. When you walk in the door and you see what you and others have created with the pile of toys, um, it, it really kind of brings home the Christmas feeling, I think. Throughout the course of the day, visitors bring toy after toy after toy and place it by the tree. Uh, throughout the year, I always, if I see something on sale, I'll buy it and then just store it until I come here. Yes, they bring the toys here despite knowing plenty of other drop-off locations exist. And I think there's a lot of pride that people to be able to say that they were 
part of a group that gave this much to the Toys for Touts and, and to bring a lot of smiles to people during the holidays. Wow, you guys. In this season of giving, you must be six. No. Few things are more enjoyable than seeing the enthusiasm on a child's face when they unwrap a brand new toy. I love when people donate because it's a sense of giving. That's what Christmas is about. That's awesome. The kids receiving these toys might not live in the greatest of circumstances in their day-to-day -day lives. They deserve to have happiness as much as anybody else does. Yet, thanks to Jerry and his party goers, <laughs> happiness will come to several hundred children this Christmas. There's a lot of good in people. In Brooklyn Park, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. At last count, Jerry collected about 570 toys and collected $650. Still ahead, 60,000 holiday lights in Plymouth that each have a special meaning. But first, the volunteer effort that the volunteers didn't want to end. How it turned into a year-round thing, that story when we come back. The Super Bowl is history, but the game has left behind some holiday spirit. As Eric Nelson reports, volunteers for Super Bowl 52 are still out doing good things in the community. We wanted to stick together, and so we called ourselves Forever 52, and we are working to mobilize volunteers that were formerly involved with the Super Bowl. Last January, Minnesota became the land of 10,000 volunteers. Hey folks, NFL experience down the stairs and across the street. Crew 52, with their cool looking coats, welcome visitors to the bold north for Super Bowl 52 in the frigid Twin Cities. Super Bowl, we had a blast. Today, Crew 52 has morphed into Forever 52. Some of those same volunteers are together again, eager to give back. As a charity, we're great at working together, as we proved in Super Bowl 52, and we still work together and do things to help the community, whether it be individually or as a group. When I came here almost three years ago, I came from Indonesia. I don't have any family or friends. So I'm thinking doing volunteer is a good way to give back to community and also to make friends. At a recent toy collection in Plymouth, Forever 52 volunteers came together for another good cause. It's giving back to your community. Yeah, we call ourselves the Skull Sisters. Besides doing good things, Forever 52 was formed for one other reason. Because we all were so bummed out that it ended. We just loved the experience so much and the friendship that we found. We're really excited to just to see one another again. Something that started organically that has now spun into something big. We have over 1,800 on our Facebook page. Forever 52 has accelerated into a non-profit with a board of seven that meets a couple times a month. We have actually 25 different leaders that are helping in a variety of different capacities to help promote and organize volunteers, organize events. We work together on MOCA events, on Salvation Army, Feed My Starving Children. We had 150 of us come together at three different locations and kind of cheer each other on. I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. Forever 52 does volunteer work all across the Twin Cities metro. This year they set up toy donation spots in supermarkets, libraries, and other spots all across the metro. Still ahead, the sounds of the season, season soothe at a local high school. Plus an extraordinary effort that only came together this year thanks to an extraordinary neighbor. That story when we come back. A holiday tradition in Plymouth shines on for another year. 2017 was supposed to be the final year for PD Shimmers, which is the holiday light display to raise awareness for Parkinson's disease. But as Delane Cleveland reports, a neighbor with some experience in holiday attractions stepped up to help the show go on. If holiday spirit could be measured in lights and music, few places could compete with the Christmas cheer. Merry Christmas. That's on display in this Plymouth neighborhood. This is PD Shimmers. Since 2010, PD Shimmers has dazzled passers-by with a light show synchronized to a soundtrack on FM radio. 
It's a tradition developed by Mike Justak, who was diagnosed with Parkinson's 14 years ago. All along, uh, the design of the show has reflected a struggle with Parkinson's. 60,000 lights. Each of the show's 60,000 flashing lights are designed to represent the Americans diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2018. It's commercial or whatever you want to think of it, it may be, you know, it, it, it has impact. Christmas time is here again. But the fact that the show is even happening this year may come as a surprise to longtime fans. Last year especially, I, you know, I made the announcement that it was going to be my last year. Maintaining a show of this magnitude while dealing with a neurological disease that affects movement is no easy task. This requires me to go to work five, day, you know, five hours a day, every day for 30 days straight. And you know, I'm not, I'm not regimented like that anymore. Yet instead of pulling the plug, Mike found help from one of his neighbors. Matt Dunn. At the end of the season, I knocked on his door and met him and I said, hey, you know, I do something for Christmas outside my house with Meals on Wheels and your show is so cool. Um, you know, what if uh, um, I were to help you with the parts that you're finding to be difficult to, of the show? But I wanna thank you, baby. Matt already had a display outside of his home comprised of characters from the old Dayton's holiday shows. Yeah, a lot of nostalgia for people. I thought they, they, they just think it's fun to come by and see him. So it became a natural collaboration that allowed PD Shimmers to shimmer on, albeit mostly in a different location. And ultimately, Mike still decided to do much of the setup this year after all. Well, I look at this as a a way to fight back again, which is what I've always tried to do. That determination, combined with the kindness of strangers, will help spread the holiday cheer for another season. But the lights represent more than just a season, but it, they represent people. In Plymouth, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. PD Shimmers runs every day through December 28th from 5 to 10 p.m. along Juno Lane in Plymouth. And there's also a smaller show over on Ithaca Lane. And finally, we will leave you today with music from the annual Christmas concert from West Lutheran High School. The school's choir and orchestra played religious Christmas carols to get everyone in the spirit of the season. So please enjoy and have a very Merry Christmas.